All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I'm delighted to welcome from Houston, Texas, Suman Sherry. How are you doing? I'm good, Suman John. Cherry. How are you? Did I just say Suman Sherry? I meant Suman Cherry. <laughs> My apologies. <laughs> No problem. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. And uh, Suman has over 20 years experience in the recruiting world and has honed her abilities to quickly grasp the needs of both clients and candidates. And as a matchmaker at heart, she takes pride in placing over 500 employees in industries such as medical oil, gas, construction and real estate. And Suman, you understand the struggles companies face in finding the right match and creating a healthy experience for everybody involved. I always say this, Suman, like, I'll be honest, throughout my career, I have recruited and hired lots and lots and lots of people. And I can honestly say that my strike rate for hiring absolutely fantastic people is very small. Um, and, and I don't think I'm, I don't think I am, in the minority here. I think that's for, I think most, most people, especially people who've been executives and run all that kind of stuff that I speak to, if they're honest, they'll tell you the same thing, right? That it's still completely hit or miss that you, you know, you don't know until suddenly six months into having that person, you suddenly realize, oops, this is the wrong fit. But yet we still go about recruiting pretty much in the same way as we always have. So it's like, we don't even learn from our mistakes. Yeah, I mean, I think the thing about recruiting is that, you know, you're dealing with two humans, right? Like you're not dealing with a product, right? Yeah. It's not a transactional type of situation. I mean, you're dealing with a person. It's like anything else. I mean, you're dealing with a person, you're matching them with other person. So it's just or a company in this matter. So it's a challenge, right, to find the right match that has the right skill set, but also has the right values and those pieces that are important to you for your organization and and having someone who's going to be able to match and that culture and also bring more to it mm -hmm. and take kind of your company to the next level it is it isn't an easy feat by any means you know no and and let's face it, i mean the process is in most companies is pretty unchanged for the last you know couple of centuries i'd say you know, at this stage you know, where maybe there's a little more technology involved but but generally speaking the process is still the same so when in your work how do you how do you get to the right fit like you talk about matchmaking so how do you get to where both you can both parties are at least in the same arena can probably dance to the same tune well i think that you know when you are when you're it, it's just like anything else i think there has to be a lot of transparency authenticity mm -hmm. right when you're approaching someone on a position you have to take the time to understand who this person is right like you have to take that time to understand who they are outside of just a resume right who they are as a person what types of um things they have been through in their own lives and understanding how they na navigated through that and i also think there always also has to be this like deep understanding that we have to be transparent and authentic and real with people, right? On both sides, like as a recruiter or as in you know, my company, I'm very real with my clients. I'm really real with my candidates. So it's a lot of real conversations. It's not fluff, right? We're, yeah. we're having real conversations. Like this is what the role is. It's, it, you know, the grass is not greener, right? You're actually going for a job, but is it a better match for you in your family life? Is it a better match for you monetarily? Is it a better match for you in what your growth plans are? And what does that look like? And does that company have that ability to give that to you, right? Mm -hmm. And on the flip side, from the client side, what is it you really need? Because every client wants a unicorn, right? We all yep. have this huge list of requirements, but really what is it that is the most core pieces that this person needs to have and those soft skills need to be played into as well and i agree with you like the process itself of the recruiting process it's absolutely so stressful for candidates it's so stressful for hiring managers the whole process is not organized well and so mm -hmm. when you have someone to come in and kind of streamline that process for you and create that safety that really that safety piece then it the, the process itself is so much easier, right? Because you're not having the situation where a candidate doesn't know who your company is. They have some understanding of who they are, what the role is gonna be. They've had conversations. And when you're going in for those interviews, you can really have a deeper assessment on who they are, if that makes mm -hmm. sense. You know? No, no, no. That that makes total sense. And it just it just reminded me of something there. But what you said there about you know leveraging maybe an external recruiter because let's face it, nobody 
in the company, like especially the, you may want to, it may be your resource that you're hiring for, right? So you're highly motivated that you want, it's still a major interruption to your daily work practice is to have to go and interview people and resume and do all of this. And, and so I feel like it gets, it, it gets, um, it doesn't get the attention it deserves. So we say that, that we shortcut all the time because it's just a, a kind of process that comes from left field every so often and we don't enjoy it. I, I don't know anybody who really enjoys recruiting. <laughs> That's what people tell me. Like, I can't, I would hate your job. I have so many people tell me, like my clients, like, mm. I would hate what you do. And and yeah, if I had all the other responsibilities in, in my company mm. that it would be impossible, right? Like if I had all the responsibilities of running a business and then I had to go on top of that, I had to source through hundreds of resumes, follow up with people, have deep conversations with them, schedule the interviews, follow up with them, you know, and all those pieces, make sure we don't ghost people and that whole process. Like, yeah, making sure the job description is right, making sure that you're not being charged thousands of dollars on these job posting sites. I mean, all of those pieces play into it. It's a, it's a lot of time, but it is, the most important part of your business is the yeah. people in your company. So it's like, it's like this big pink elephant in a room, right? Nobody wants to take the responsibility of it, but it's something that has to be handled. So mm -hmm. yeah, working with an external recruiter is, is like such a benefit to a company, but the plus the negatives to hiring traditionally with an external recruiter, it's been very expensive. Yeah. It's very, yeah. very expensive, right? It's like 20, 25% of the first year salary. I mean, you know, a hundred thousand dollar candidate, that's a $25,000 placement. And then a six month to one year, um, you know, guarantee. Well, oh my gosh, that's a lot of money. But yeah. versus like what we do, we do it on a consulting basis. So it's more hourly, it's based, and you get a lot of value with that because we're very honest, we're very direct, and we're like an extension of your team when we're speaking to people and you're saving a lot of money and time as well. We're saving mm -hmm. our clients a lot of money and time as and, well. And, and tell me, you know, that, and, and I, I totally agree with you. I think that the whole uh, cost structure of, of external recruiting is, is, is crazy. It's very prohibitive um, for most organizations. And like you said, I mean, you can pay 25% of the salary and if they, uh, and yeah, you have a, maybe a replacement guarantee, but if that person washes out after three, six months, yeah, they have to go and find your replacement, and that's another three, six months or so. I mean, before you know it, I mean, it's just it's just uh, compounding the misery, if you like. <laughs> yeah. um, one of the things that fascinates me is when you work with companies and they say, "I want to." Re I, here's what we need to recruit for X position. How often do you have to sort of sit down and go, can you really describe what kind of is what are they going to do? Whatever this isn't very apparent to me because I often think we identify a need we throw together a job description and we fire that. And that's the amount of thought that really goes into it. Yeah, no, I mean, I'm not an ambulance chaser, right? Like I want to be successful in hiring someone mm -hmm. or my people. So yeah, we spend a lot of time. Like I'm like, walk me through what the responsibilities of this role are. Like, let me understand it. What is, what are they going to be doing in this role? And what's the environment like in this, you know, in this role? Is it stressful? Is it hot? You know, is there a lot of over, I want to understand. I want to walk the shoes of that person. Mm -hmm. And, and when we, when I do the job description, when we do the job descriptions, we take a lot of time because we're not throwing up the job description. We're actually going onto their website. We're looking right. at who the values are. We're creating a whole, you know, a marketing, uh, a branding piece, right? Because your job description is really important. And we want to make sure that it aligns with what are other people asking for in this type of role, right? We want to, we want to be in that norm. And what kind of income are we looking at, like salary wise? Like, we want to create something that's going to stand out. So when that position is up there, you know, you're getting feeded a lot of really great people because they're like, wow, this sounds like a really interesting company. This sounds like an interesting opportunity. Um, and even more than that, like creating that buzz and that generation, that marketing, it also filters to you because sometimes the candidates will go directly to the clients, which is fine, right? Mm -hmm. Like I, I don't have any attachment to that. I want, my goal is to provide very good candidates. So you have three, two, three really good candidates and you're like, pulling your hair, which one, which one do I choose? I love them both. Right. Like mm -hmm. that's what I want to create. So if another, if you get a, a referral from someone else, they saw that position out there. Great. Right. So it's, it's such a positive thing for a company to have someone come out there and create this whole branding for them because they need that. They need someone to be their advocate and really talk about who they are. Yeah, and I, no, and I think that's a great point. And I think even more so today, because this is becoming more and more of a, I mean, the landscape is changing so much. And, you know, people are looking for different things in a job. Uh, you're probably coming up against this now is, uh, you know, things have, the, the balance has changed a lot where people are now saying, you know, I'm going to go live 
where I can have a good quality of life, et cetera. And then I'm going to find a job, you know, a remote because I can get a remote job. Uh, and so I think there's a lot more going into it now. And I think people are assessing their next job, but maybe a little more deeply than they did before. Yeah, I think when COVID happened and everyone went home and everyone realized, oh my gosh, I sacrificed everything for my work and I, my mental health is a mess, my physical, my marriage, all the things, right? And they came home, they started really having, they had nothing to do. They were being forced to kind of face that piece, right? Mm -hmm. I think that people kind of took a step back from that and they said, no, I, I want more, right? Mm -hmm. I want more. I don't want my job to be the all consuming everything. I want to work for companies where they understand that we have families and we have other responsibilities outside of here. And also they want to work for leaders that are inspiring, right? Mm -hmm. That are growth oriented, that care, that have compassion, not some, a fear-based leader that's shoving fear down their throat all the time. They don't want to be in that environment. They just don't. And that's what you're really seeing. More and more candidates are like, tell me about the company. Like, because, because good candidates are always hard to find, like mm -hmm. well, very good candidates in any economy, they're always going to be hard to find. And so they have a lot of options. So to, to attract those top people, you have to be able to provide more than just a high base and salary, right? You have to be able to provide them a security, a safety, a growth, expansion, leader, positive leadership. People will be part of something, right? They want to be part of like a community and they want to be understood that like when they're there, they're, that their growth is fostered. They are in groups with like-minded or you know even they're different but people who have are positive people who take accountability people who take responsibility those are all very important pieces for candidates mm -hmm. as well no no I, I i agree i agree completely um and i guess i mean the point is as we know like finding top top uh, candidates is really tough but generally speaking the best people already have jobs so you have right. so it's not that they're out there looking so you have a persuasion job to do right yeah i mean i think the thing of what's so interesting about our model is that you know since we're not attached to the placement right so we get paid hourly we we don't persuade in the way that maybe a contingent recruiter would like mm -hmm. omitting information mm -hmm. or letting some, you know, and I'm not, I, I don't think this is the case for, I did re contingent recruiting for many years. So I know it's a lot of sales, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, and, and sales on both sides. I think it's more about um, letting them have awareness of what the position is. Like I recently placed multiple positions with a new client of mine and, and, and the company's amazing. They have this incredible culture. They're, they're an incredible company. They really are. And, but then no one really knew they existed. They didn't even know the jobs were out there. Right. So they kept pulling the same people, the referrals or the people that walked the door. It's just, they didn't even have the accessibility of knowing that it existed, that that opportunity was out there. Yeah, and that's yes, and I think that's the that's the important point. And just going back again to the that what you just said is working with the the hiring company to make sure that all these pieces in place. I'll give you a quick anecdote. I had an experience many years ago when I was in uh, Silicon Valley during the dot com, and the recruiter contacted me, said there was a VP level job over at this startup. I went to the interview. I interviewed with the CEO and then all the executive team, and then on the way back, the recruiter called me and said, "Oh well." Uh, what do you think? And I said, I think that this job is all the parts of everybody else's job that they don't like, don't want to do. And they put it all together into one job and it's going to be it's not going to succeed. So you can count me out. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think that there has to be transparency. It's a, it's a major decision, right, to, mm -hmm. to, to move jobs. So so, you know, as a recruiter, you know, you need to be able to have honest conversations, but a lot of that's going to come from the relationship with the candidate, the client, mm -hmm. as, because, and because our model is so consultative based and hourly based, we have just a deeper relationship with our clients, right? Like we're just constantly, I tell clients when I, when we sign up for them, I'm like, you're going to get tired of me. I'm going to mm -hmm. be bothered all the time because we're constantly in communication. We're constantly checking in. Hey, we saw this candidate. Hey, did you follow up with this? Hey, did you get this? You know, it's like, we're constantly hurting the cats, but we are really are. And on the contingent recruiting side, you're not going to have that as much because they're working on a lot of positions. They're working on 15, 20 positions and because they get paid only when they place a candidate, mm -hmm. but that's not how we work. We get paid regardless. So we don't have that attachment piece. So there's just a lot of transparency. I mean, I've had very honest conversations with candidates. Like I've very honest can And I mean, I had a client today, a potential client who I had to have a very honest conversation with and say, no, I don't, we can't help you. Your right. salary is 
flow. I mean, unless you guys can can come to the table with a salary that's going to be more reasonable in the marketplace, we can't help you. I mean, I could have taken that business on, right? And I could have charged them a bunch of hours, but it wouldn't have served anyone. So that's the thing. It has to be transparency in those conversations and authenticity. Yeah, and no, and I love that because um, you know that, that having those frank dis, uh, frank discussions, you know, with the with the hiring thing, because I think that's the other part. Sometimes the expectations are, I mean, you see like the job description, you're like, are, are you out of your mind? And then you look at the salary and say, are you doubly out of your mind? Um, <laughs> right. So, so bringing, I mean, I think that's a great uh, that bringing some more reality and pragmatism to the process is a good thing for both sides because you otherwise you're wasting each other's time, right? Yeah, you are because what ends up happening is if you let's say you end up getting this rock star candidate and they mm -hmm. they take this lower salary because they're just in a situation where they can right? right and like maybe they just got laid off it happens right you get rock star candidates who get laid off and they are like okay well and and you as the recruiters like oh but there's so much potential there's bonuses there's this and you're gonna get all these shiny things in a year and then they take a lateral move or they take less money well what's gonna happen when that doesn't happen? Right. If it doesn't happen, because you can't really guarantee that's going to happen, right? So then what has, happens? Then they leave. Then the next, then the economy changes and, then, and there's all these opportunities or they start feeling like, oh, I was promised X, 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 X. I walked in the door and this is not what it is. Well, they're going to start, they're already going to be disengaged and looking at something else. And that happens all the time. Yeah. So you have to be very realistic. Like you want someone, the candidate that you want is not someone who's necessarily done everything that you need for that job. But they've done some parts of it and they are can be a solution to some of the, the pain that you have. And it's the next level for them. It's a natural progression for them. So this opportunity is going to be hungry, motivate. They're going to be excited. Right. So that's what you really want in a candidate. You don't want someone who's been doing the same that same job for 10 years and, and then you're paying them the same amount of money. What benefit is that, right? Like, it's not going to be a benefit because it's not going to be someone growth oriented either. Because in most cases, companies need people who are growth oriented that want that next role, that are hungry for the next role because they're going to be engaged at the company. Yeah, and and the other part too then is uh, how often have you come across the situation where you know you get the great candidate, you get them excited, all of this, the company's excited, blah blah, blah and you make the the um, they make the hire, and then that person starts on day one and. There's really nothing in place, you know. There's you know, nobody's yeah. responsible for them. There's no so it's like that mode of me. You're hey, excited. You start your company, and then it's like sitting, staring at the wall, going, w -w 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 "What next?" Kind yeah, of. the onboarding piece is something I, I I'm really trying to. I mean, it's not something I sure. offer right now, but it's something in my future because mm -hmm. it is definitely that is a huge piece of it. Because yeah, you get them all excited, and then you get them on board, and it's like crickets right like it's like okay it's like every other you know monday where you need like this this, com this person doesn't know you right they don't they don't know you this is scary this is new for them you need to be able to create that momentum if you're going to have a successful um you have to have a successful onboarding like best companies that i know do very good onboarding they have come you know lunches the the leaders are spending 30 minutes to an hour with this employee you know having conversations like tell me about yourself and mm -hmm. who are you and tell me about what your goals are and what you see because you want to get people excited and engage okay we're gonna and it's like children right you want to have that structure piece right because yeah. everyone needs that so like in three months we're going to talk again so it's like they know that there's something there and then there's a welcome for them like you're yeah. excited have them so yeah it's it is very important the, un the onboarding piece is yeah so no i i always think that that's so it's so important and especially if you think about it now with so much remote working and hybrid working it's even more important can you imagine starting your first day at work as a remote worker and you're literally staring at the screen and you're not sure what you're supposed to do yeah. now <laughs> yeah i mean the, the companies i've worked for or worked with and in, in my own my, my own career they had excellent onboarding you know they took that time they had the structure there. They had training. They had the accountability piece. They had the, you know, you want, as a new person, you want to see your leaders, right? You want to meet your leaders. And yeah. if you have the opportunity to do that, that needs to be done. Even if it's just a phone call or whatever else, there needs to be this like warm reception, yeah. you know, for sure. Yeah, no, I I totally agree. Absolutely. Well, listen, uh, Suman, this has been fantastic. All of Suman's information is going to be below this video. But before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about you and your business. So I am the CEO of Cherry Talent Group. Um, my business is recruiting, matchmaking. Um, we do it really different. It's There's no one else offering. It's a new way of hiring. It's 
It's uh, authentic and transparent. It's very human based and it saves you guys a lot of money and yeah. a lot of time and a lot of, and, and I love, and we love it. Like I'm someone who just loves people. So for me, it's like a natural thing. And I just, and it's fun. It really is fun. And is it fair to say you cherry pick the best candidates? I cherry pick the best <laughs> candidates. <laughs> yes. I love that. Yes, I cherry pick the best candidates for sure. I'm gonna uh, have a tagline. I love yeah. that. <laughs> there you go. I'll give you that one for free. Um, <laughs> all right. Well, listen, thanks again, Zoom, and thank you for watching and listening. And I'll see you all again soon. Thank you. Thank you.